With the Ancient Gods 2 birthday, we're going to talk about some things that don't get talked about enough and have some fun with it. You gotta stick around for this one. So first of all, we know that the release was a bit wild. No, seriously, a lot of the community was up in arms about, hey, we're coming off of Tag 1. We thought this was going to be like a super insanely difficult conclusion, final, and last hurrah of the Slayer. And then what ended up happening was it was meant to be a celebration, something to just let off some steam, have some challenge, but not go too crazy with it, right? And that's what got a lot of people upset. And I wanted to say, hey guys, let's go and just take a minute to see what's going on, play it, give it time, and they actually did buff it some in a recent update. Now that was really something that went crazy, and a lot of people have talked about it, and I want to know where you were in on this. Were you part of the crew that was all pro tag to how it was, or did you want it tougher? There's a lot of different viewpoints out there, but there's so much more to talk about with this. We gotta talk about this five marauder Easter egg. Yes, did you know that existed? Well, we gotta talk a story about it. I've, I've never really opened up about this before. So, this is a good opportunity. The five marauder Easter egg is something I discovered around 3 a.m. and it's been some months ago. What had happened was Jason O'Connell, which he was the principal level designer for id Software, he was actually leaving the company and he had posted a picture, a, a montage collage of all these Easter eggs that he had across the games he ever worked on. And there was something that was interesting. There was something in World Spear, but what was it? It was a sword. Why did he post a sword and a cake and whatever? Well, it turns out there was an undiscovered Easter egg months after the game had been released and nobody found it yet. Nobody was on Twitter pointing to this picture and saying, look, why is this world spear here? But I noticed it. And so I DM'd him on Twitter and we got to talking about it and apparently there was an Easter egg that nobody had discovered. So I spent some hours and I talked to him. I'm like, all right, give me some hints. I'm going to try to find this thing. Let's go. And I found a cake, which I'm, you can try to find it. It's in by the forest over by the gap. You just check it out. It's the same cake from Super Gorness, but really, really tiny. So I tried everything. I tried like shooting walls and doing anything I can imagine. And he eventually kept giving me hints, you know, I was closer to this, closer to that. And it finally pulling the sword found it. This is the highest Marauder count in official content. Five of them. And what's funny, I gotta tell you how this changed everything here in a minute. What's funny is how it took hours to find. It got to the point to where I'm like, Jason, I can't find this. I've been looking for hours. And he started to get worried like, oh my gosh, maybe it's not working. Did I do something wrong? But sure enough, we actually found it. So what you have to do is you have to unlock fast travel at the end of the level, go back to the forest, turn around and buy this rock. You pull a sword out of the ground and five marauders spawn. Like, how would you even think to find that? That was so well hidden. And I found it and made a video on it. You should check it out. It shows you how to do it and everything. And it's like, holy crap, five marauders. And console players were at a huge advantage here because where they don't have access to mods, I am so sorry, they got to fight five marauders where, you know, if you did mods on PC, you already could. So it was a really cool experience to be able to have this officially and that anyone could access. And it was a first discovery, which really felt neat. And I'm glad that we were able to fight them now. And with a little bit of no clip and some PC workarounds, you can actually fight that forest fight with those five marauders. And it's really hard if you leave the marauders alive till the very end and kill everything else first. It's a pretty cool Easter egg and a fun challenge. And I think you really should check it out. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the ending of the game. Now, there's a little bit of a twist to this. Everybody knows the Slayer has fulfilled his purpose. He goes to sleep in the coffin, and that's it. The Korax Entry 717 from the beginning of Doom 2016 pops up on the screen. May the blood on your sword never dry, never need you again, all that stuff. But it is such a somber ending for the Slayer. It's like, all right, our most powerful dude takes a nap. Okay, I get it though. The ending makes sense with the story. I see what Hugo and the team were working with. I see why they went the direction that they did, and it opens up the potential for the future of the Slayer. But we cannot deny that the community wanted answers on what if it was a more triumphant ending? What if he was out fighting in Amora with the Sentinel Army? Of course, well, all the demons were dead by that point, but I got to thinking. What if the community made their own ending? So I got with a team of people and well, we made Tag 3.
it's an unofficial version and you can do it on YouTube. This is something because I wanted console players to be able to get in on this as well because they don't have access to mods. So I made this choose your own adventure interactive YouTube series to where you jump from video to video making decisions for the Slayer. The whole point of it is you are the Slayer and the Archpriest is Devos' final minion that is alive and he has his own minions called the Dread Legion. And we actually got a guy that's a metal vocalist named Sir Aramis to voice him. And we had a whole team behind it. And then you have to go save the intern. But there are some, cho I'm not going to spoil it for you. There's some choices that you have to make that rely on your selfishness or selflessness and battle decisions, morality stuff. You got to check it out. I'll link it in the description if you haven't played it. It takes like 10 minutes to beat it. I will say there are some editing tricks I did there, things I added in, and some story that I made that is sneaky and under the hood. You'll have to see what I'm talking about, the explanation behind it. You got to check it out. Now this ending, I'm very curious where we'll go with all of the world spear, things on the wall, the wraiths, that's what I'm looking for, and where we'll see and go in the future with it. Because these master levels like world spear, I believe that world spear is the hardest official content that we have, especially if you want to do it without the hammer or something like that. So if we would be able to have these tag one master levels maybe, or you know, reclaimed earth, Immora, or even Dark Lord. There is so much potential and Mora is so wide open. I know this would work because I've played Kamvaz's Mora Master level and the things he does with this mod are insane. It shows the true potential and power that Imora has. If you've not played it, I won't spoil any of it. You need to go try it yourself if you're on PC. Like I said, there's a lot of interesting encounters in it that I don't want to show you. There is an escalation encounter that he created in the city and there's just like, okay, I'll tell you, there's like triple arch files, something possessed. It's insane. There's so much potential in these levels. There's a new master level out, a mod that I've not played yet called Unreclaimed Earth that really takes Reclaimed Earth and just turns it on its head and really gives a lot of players some hard, difficult times by IDK929. And there's just so much that could happen in the future. So much that we have not seen that I think Tag 2 could have. It got so much crap. When it, you gotta hear this, okay? Please pay attention to this. Tag 2 got so much crap when it first came out by players who wanted a sweat fest, CBT, cultist based torture. Not really, don't look it up on Urban Dictionary. I'm not gonna be responsible for that. And now there's so much potential that we have now seen the community bring out with Tag 2. Look what we could have. Look what could come. Look what its software has already done with the World Spear Master level. And look what we could have. Delta the Modder even created a master campaign for Tag 2, which I need to play. I'm quite behind on mods. But you really can see, based off of what it seems like everybody else is saying, that there's so much potential for this game that we have not seen yet, but it's out there. Where is it? It's just not made yet. Now, I know with the game reaching its age that we're probably not going to get many major updates in the future, and it's kind of unfortunate. I wish that this game would be supported forever, honestly, in a perfect world. But if you have the community, if you have what its software has left for us, the plans that they have remaining, which I don't think any Tag 2 stuff is on the horizon, but hey, I could be wrong with it. What could we have? What influence could this DLC have on the future and where we players are now with our abilities? What could come? It's exciting to see what's left for Doom Eternal in the future. We have such a core player base that's behind it, and I'm ready to see what happens. Go play Tag 3 here if you haven't already, or check out the 5 Marauder Easter Egg. Definitely go play Tag 3. It's so much fun. I'm Alston. Thank you for watching.